welcome to your at-home worship this week. And this week, just like every week, you don't worship alone. Worship's always going on around the heavenly throne, and so when you begin worship, you're joining the worship that's already been happening since the foundation of the universe. And when you conclude worship, that worship continues. But that's not all. Because by the power of the Holy Spirit, this family that God has made us, we also worship together, although we may be separated by time and space. And one of the ways that we love to throw our unity in the face of all this disunity is to pray together. And we're going to begin our worship here with Luther's morning prayer, but what you can do is on Sunday morning at 10 a.m., pray this prayer, and then you'll be praying it with, with the rest of us wherever we are. But now, let us pray. I give, I give thanks, thanks to you, you Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, through Jesus Christ, Christ your dear Son, that you have protected me through the night from all harm and danger. I ask that you would also protect me today from sin and all evil, so that my life and actions may please you. Into your hands I commend myself, my body, my soul, and all that is mine. Let your holy angel be with me, so that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. And you may remember from a few weeks back, we pointed out how the root of the word angel is a messenger. And the Lord's holy angel is the one who comes bearing the Lord's word. In this case, it's me, but it can be any of us. So, let us confess our sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all God's children say, Amen. God of mercy, we, we confess, confess we, we have sinned against you and against others, both knowingly and unknowingly. You call us to love, and we hate. You call us to peace, and we bring violence. You call us to be generous, and we are greedy. Lord, for these sins, and all that we confess now in the silence of our hearts, we have merited your wrath. Forgive us, Lord. And so now receive your absolution. In these words, what happens is a whole new creation dawns on you, a whole new day. And gone are those old days of trying to prove your worthiness yourself. And instead what happens is God proves his love for you. And in God's action, all of creation, you yourself are made new and life, instead of being one more hurdle to clear, becomes just one more of your Lord's gifts to receive. And so, receive the beginning of all those gifts. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all your sins are forgiven. And all God's children say, Amen. So let us sing for what God has done. Our hymn is, Morning Has Broken.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Abba, Father, you we have adopted, adopted us as heirs of your kingdom, and we have inherited the gift of your Holy Spirit living within us. Through the fire of your Spirit, set us free to be lords of all and servants of everyone. For the sake of the one whose fire brings light and life to all the world, Jesus Christ. Amen. And our lector this week is LaDonna. Thank you, LaDonna. Psalm 104, 27 through 33. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them. They gather it, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth, and it trembles. You touch the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. Today's scripture is from Paul's epistle to the Church of Gal Galatia. Thanks be to God. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want to be circumcised so that they may boast about their flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision, circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them, and mercy and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one make trouble for me, for I carry the marks of Jesus branded on my body. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. When I was about 26, I served as a chaplain for part of my training to be a pastor. Can you imagine that? Asking for a chaplain and then having some fresh-faced 20-something walk into your hospital room? Well, I don't have too much trouble imagining it because the folks there in, in St. Joseph, Missouri, they let me know exactly what they thought. I'd walk into the room and they'd blurt out, you can't be the chaplain, you're just a kid. You know, at the time, I told myself, once I'm ordained, once I'm ordained, then I won't have to prove I'm really a card-carrying member of the clergy anymore. But, you know, that's, that's not what happened. I was just ordained a couple of measly years after that. I was, I was still a kid. In fact, plenty of you, you can remember those days. And while I don't think anyone was so frank <laughs> as to say I was too young to be a pastor, it, it was made clear in so many ways that, well, my youth was something of a scandal. 
In fact, I remember complaining about this to an older, wiser pastor. I, I asked him what he thought I should do uh, with everyone thinking I was too young. And grinning, he just rubbed his bald head and said, that will take care of itself. And as you can see, for the most part, it has. <laughs> now, you might be tempted to, to chuckle at, at uh, my naive way of thinking, but, but I'd suggest hold your tongue. Hold your tongue because you're no different. You see, we all have these external marks, these things that we think if we can measure up to them, then we'll finally prove ourselves. It could be a mortgage payment. It could be how your children are doing. It could be where your waistline is. It could be how far you've made it on the corporate ladder. It, it, it could be what your friends and family say about you when you're not around. It could be a combination of all these things or something else entirely. But no matter what, we all have them. We all have these standards that we think stacking ourselves up against will silence those nagging doubts that we're not really all we're cracked up to be. The problem, however, is all those benchmarks, they're all the same. <laughs> they're all just like the ones I told you about in my pursuit to be the consummate clergy. They're moving goalposts. You can never actually finally reach them. As it turns out, this isn't a new problem. Although it does seem turned up to 11 these days, the, the pursuit to measure up starts sooner and the goals seem to get higher every year. But for the folks in Galatia in today's scripture, the particular issue for them was religious observance, traditional religious observance, specifically male circumcision. You see, they thought if they could just chin up to that bar of this historical custom, then they could finally show that they were the real deal, that they were true believers. The problem with all that, says the Apostle Paul, is they're trying to make a nothing into a something. They're trying to make a nothing into a something. You know, you've heard of making a... A uh, molehill into a mountain, but this is worse. This is taking a nothing and trying to make it into a something. So what the folks in Galatia are doing is they're taking the nothing of doing this or that to measure up and trying to make it into a standard that can show they measure up. You see, they're trying to, to take a nothing and make it into a something that can quell their insecurities, a something that can confirm they're the genuine article. And the reason uh, th those actions and all of our actions are a bunch of nothing is because none of them can actually deliver on the promises they make. So the Galatians, for instance, even if they went all the way and got circumcised, there would just be the next thing to do. And Paul tells them that they don't have to look any further for evidence than the folks who are telling them they should get circumcised because even those people, even those purists, they can't get themselves across the finish line. That's why they're trying to uh, gin up the Galatians, trying to get the Galatians to go all the way so that those folks can pad their own religious bottom line. It's no different with our self-justification projects either, is it? You have enough experience under your belt to know that no sooner do you reach one goal then the next one emerges. Or worse, what happens is suddenly the, the meager progress you've made becomes an, an attainment you've got to keep, that you've got to keep proving that you're worthy of. Here's an example, uh, an illustration that's for free. They say don't tell kids that they're smart. Instead, tell them that they're hard workers. A study of fifth graders found that they were more likely to work on a test above their level if they were told they work hard instead of that they're smart. 
And the reason for this, the logic goes, is that the kids who were told they were smart thought they had a reputation to maintain. Now, we may not be fifth graders, but we're no different, are we? Apparently, human nature emerges early. We think meeting that benchmark will finally prove our worthiness, but it doesn't really work that way, does it? The benchmark isn't really a benchmark. In the end, it's just a whole bunch of nothing. You see, what we need, as it turns out, isn't to measure up at all. What we need is for that whole enterprise to come to an end, for all the measurements to cease. And the brilliantly good news Paul can't believe the Galatians are turning their nose up at is that that is precisely what's happened in Jesus Christ. In, in the scripture we just heard, you might expect Paul to say, circumcision isn't anything, and he does. But he goes on to say that neither is uncircumcision anything either, the very route he's advancing. Because you see, in Christ, it's not a matter of meeting any of those marks. In Christ, it's a matter of meeting him, meeting Jesus, meeting Jesus who is the end of all those measurements, meeting Jesus who is the fullness of God's love, meeting Jesus who settles that question of your worth by proving his love for you, Jesus who silences all those other voices out there telling you you've got to measure up by telling you how much he loves you. In Jesus, all those externals, they've come to an end once and for all. And that end is Jesus himself. Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus, the beginning and the end. Jesus, the one who meets every last standard there is, but not to justify himself. No, Jesus meets all those standards to justify you and me. In Jesus, all those measuring rods, they've been broken. <laughs> they've been broken on Jesus' undying love. And what's more, Jesus takes those pieces and fashions them into a cross. The cross, the symbol of Jesus' love that knows no end. The cross, the symbol you and I were marked with at our baptism. You too have been crucified with Christ. All those old standards, they don't have a thing on you anymore. In Christ, they're as good as dead. And now all that's left is the eternal measure of God's love sealed on your forehead at your baptism forever. Here. And here, assuredly, is where all your worthiness is found. And best of all, this judgment is unmovable. God created all of this to give it to you. Jesus marked it on the palm of his hand forever at the cross to prove it to you. And the Holy Spirit tore apart the heavens at your baptism to mark you with it forever. You want to see what you're worth? Look no further than the cross. Better yet, look no further than that mark upon your own brow sealed forever. That mark put there at your baptism by the power of the Holy Trinity, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit moving heaven and earth to come and give you God's love that knows no bounds. The response to the word is a response of faith. So with the whole church, let us confess the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so now we continue our worship with the prayers of intercession. And after each one of our prayers, each one of our intercessions, I will conclude the prayer with, Lord, in your mercy. And the response is, hear our prayer. So now, on account of Christ's mercy, let us bring our prayers for the church, the world, and all in need before the Lord. O oh Lord, we ask for your greatest blessing, which isn't anything or accomplishment, but it is assurance. It is assurance of what you have accomplished for us. Lord, we pray for each person worshiping right now a double portion of this blessed assurance. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we ask for your greatest blessing, that assurance of yours, that blessed assurance, that assurance that blesses us and makes us agents who can share your blessings. We give thanks that we do not bear this mission alone, but that you have given us partners and brothers and sisters in this work. And so we pray for Oak Street Baptist, St. John AME, Peace, Bethany and Messiah Lutheran here in town, the Synod and the people and congregations that make it up in this corner of Iowa and our Bishop Amy, and for the denomination and the people and congregations that make it up of the ELCA and our Bishop Elizabeth. And Lord, we pray for all those congregations that have nurtured us and brought us along the way. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O oh Lord, we ask for your best blessing, that blessed assurance of yours. And so in the silence of our hearts, we're going to bring those places in our lives and in the world where our assurance is waning, where we look and it's hard to see your hand at work. And we ask for your blessed assurance to trust that even there you are at work and perhaps the assurance that there you are most powerfully at work albeit hidden in your cross. And we might even dare to pray that you might use us to be those messengers, those angels who go and speak a word of your blessing that gives eyes to see and ears to hear. Lord, in the science of our hearts, we bring these places before you now. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, those who no longer need to pray for your blessed assurance are those who have been to that place where we look and it's hard to see your hand at work because all we see is the reign of death, those who have died. But you, you proved that, that promise that their hope was put in because you came and spoke your word and proved their assurance and raised them into eternal life, and now they're around your throne forever singing your hymns. And so we dare to ask not only for a portion of that assurance that they have, but for you to unite our humble worship with theirs. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And so now we raise these prayers and all that go unspoken to you, O God, in the name of the one who is, who was, and who is to come, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen.
And so now our worship continues with the thanksgiving for the word. And after each one of our thanksgivings, each one of these petitions, I will conclude with, for your word of life, O God. And the response is, we give you thanks and praise. So now let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God. We give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts. Freedom from captivity, water on the desert's journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God. We give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God. We give you thanks and praise. And so now send your spirit of truth, O oh God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O oh God, draw near to all who call on you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. And all God's children say, Amen. And so now be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. And so now we prepare to conclude our worship. We go with a hymn on our lips. Our hymn is Blessed Assurance. Let us sing together. And so now receive your blessing. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And all God's children say, Amen. And so now we conclude our worship with the Lord's Prayer. And this is another prayer that we have times of common prayer. On Saturday evenings at 5.30 and Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. we all pray this. And we invite you to join us in that time of prayer. But now, guided by, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessings. We pray that this worship service was a time for you where all those other voices constantly judging, evaluating, saying you got to measure up, that they were silenced. And all that was left was that, that piercing sound of Jesus' voice declaring his eternal, immeasurable, unstopping love for you. And the truth is we pray that it's, it's more than just during the confines of this service, that, that that voice would keep echoing in your ears and hearts throughout the rest of the week, that you might have some of that freedom to carry with you into your vocations. And in fact, that it might even be on your lips and you can share it with others. We especially pray this if it's your first week finding your way to worshiping with us through the World Wide Web. That can be a pretty wild place, and so we're glad you made it here, and we hope that that, that sound of Jesus' voice rang very clear for you. And if you're looking for a, a place to belong, uh, to be a part of a community that's formed by this voice, you know, we're the, the best group of uh, grace-hearted sinners on this side of the Mississippi. All right, well, as far as announcements go, it's kind of the same old, same old, and we try to keep them brief, you know. We are wrapping up collecting for the domestic violence shelter on the 12th of this month. We've got the food drive over here on Faith Lutheran on Sunnyside. You can help with it, or you can drive through and donate some items. We've got Vacation Bible School coming up on the 14th of June. Uh, Pride in the Park, we're going to have a booth there on the 26th of June. Later on in July, we'll have youth mission trip and... Um, so, you know, things are getting getting rolling. And speaking of that, we do have an outdoor service if you want to worship with us. We keep it about the same length as this one because it's outside and all these different things. And that's Sundays here at Faith at 10 a.m. And on the last Sunday of June, that's the 27th, after that service, we're going to have a picnic. So have a little time of fellowship that can be uh, safe and social distance and all that good stuff. And then on the in July, we're starting our in-person services, and so that'll be on the 4th of July for our first weekend here, Sundays at 10. So that's all of our announcements. I know I ticked through the different things quickly because the best way to find out more is like on our webpage or contacting us because each Friday we send out an email really short with just kind of bullet points of what's going on and how to get involved. So uh, that's everything. Uh, May that voice of Jesus echo even more loudly than all those announcements as you go from here. Blessings. Bye.